and here to give us a local law enforcement perspective and to talk about the potential for police reform is Bakersfield Police Chief Greg Terry. Chief, thank you so much for, for being here today. And I want to ask you right away what your personal reaction to this verdict was. Well, it was an important day for us. And uh, as I said, when that uh, murder occurred, it was horrific to watch. And nothing about what those officers did on that video was appropriate or has any place in American policing. And so it was an important day. It was an important day for our justice system to work. Uh, there was an investigation. There were charges filed. There was a jury in panel. There was a trial. And then with the full weight of the law, the jury delivered their verdict. And so that was an important day for our justice system as well. The spotlight now, obviously, you know, shifting to police reform. The House passed the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, but it's now stalled in the in the Senate. It would, though, ban chokeholds and also make it easier to pursue claims in civil court. Do you think that this could help? Well, the chokehold uh, has been um, uh, dealt with the law here in California, so we no longer utilize that. But, you know, you know, getting to the heart of the issue, it's about trust. We cannot, as law enforcement agencies, fulfill our responsibilities and be successful in our communities if the community doesn't trust us. And trusting relationships are built on mutual respect and understanding of what each other's needs are. It requires transparency. It requires accountability on the, on the part of law enforcement and a willingness to have and allow the community have input uh, into many of the things that we do. And so we have certainly a lot of work to do, and I'm excited about where we are now. We have a wonderful community, and we have experienced a great deal of support from our community over the many years, but we recognize that there's still work to do because there's many areas of our community where the trust is not what it should be. So how do you go about, you know, doing that work, rebuilding that trust uh, and having those conversations? Is, are there plans in the works to, to, you know, I guess at a local level, move forward and try to connect? Yeah, we are um, fully engaged in, and believe in a community policing philosophy. Uh, that means that the community has input because we have in our, across our community have tremendous public safety challenges. We cannot solve these issues alone. It will require all of us to work together. So what does that really mean? That means the community, us going out, getting outside these four walls at times, going out and engaging the community and listening and learning. Uh, and we have to do a much better job of that. And we, and we certainly intend to do that. Uh, but we also recognize at its foundation, every police officer's actions must be centered on service, justice, and fundamental fairness. Uh, and so those are the kinds of things that we're focusing on. And like I said, we firmly believe in this community policing philosophy. So we are going to be in a better way, continue to be out and engaging and listening to our community and understanding what their needs and concerns are, because we are here to serve them. And you touched a little bit on, um, you know, officers and their duty, their responsibility. Have you had any conversations, you know, with your, your fellow officers um, about the verdict? And what's kind of the, the sentiment that, that they're feeling this morning? Similar to what you've seen across the country. I mean, uh, every professional police officer saw that and recognized it for what it was. Uh, and appropriately, there were charges filed and now there was a verdict delivered. And so... Like I said, it was horrific to watch and has no place in American policing and certainly is not acceptable in any level here. Um, but yeah, there's a very, very common sentiment to what I've just expressed across our department. So the Minnesota police chief in that trial, he testified and he, he testified against one of his former officers, you know, condemning his actions, tearing down this so-called uh, blue wall of, of silence. Do you think that testimony is going to kind of change things for, for officers across the country going forward? Well, I think I think everything about that trial and that incident has changed things for the better and given us opportunities to to work to improve. But I would tell you, even here locally, uh, we have had officers disciplined, fired, uh, arrested, suspended, simply because our officers internally came forward and reported incidents. And so it is very, very important for that to take place when those kinds of things occur. And have you seen more officers reporting um, incidents since uh, George Floyd was killed? Well, not necessarily since that event, but what it's what we've been doing is raising that conversation and raising that level of awareness that you both have a responsibility and a duty to intervene and to say something when things aren't going right 
And we've had many instances where officers have done that. Some of it has been, uh, you know, taken care of with corrective action or uh, counseling or reaffirming policies or other types of training. But some of it has resulted in, like I said earlier, people being fired, suspended and arrested simply because our officers came forward and said, I saw something that wasn't right. And has there been an impact in terms of, you know, obviously you talked about, you know, some officers leaving, but is it hard to retain staff and, and recruit staff now? Well, policing is a challenging and very, very difficult uh, profession. Uh, by the nature of what we do, we are tasked with going into very chaotic, dangerous, very often uh, situations trying to learn what was what is occurring stop threats that are that are present um, engage people try to diffuse situations and de-escalate things so that we can learn um, but those uh, very often are uh, not able to do that in some instances but where we can and most often we can have an ability to do that that's where our focus is so that we are uh, delivering the professional and high level of service that our community expects from us uh, again, fundamentally, so that we can be trusted, so that we can deal in a more effective way with the public safety challenges that are facing our community. Now, you did touch on uh, de-escalating tactics. Has training uh, changed related to that, or, or will it, I guess, going forward? Training has changed a lot over the years, and it's continuing to change, and we are constantly looking to see how we can reform our training processes. What other factors can we bring in? What different types of training can we bring in? What other types of perspectives need to be uh, brought in? And, and uh, what, uh, how can we broaden the perspective and the competency of our officers to deal with what I've just described as sometimes very dynamic and very chaotic situations so that they're prepared and skilled and equipped uh, to de-escalate um, when they can and when it's important to do so. Now we're out of time, but I do want to ask one quick final question. What would your message be to uh, people here in, in Bakersfield, the message from the police department moving forward? Well, I just want to thank our community for their support. We, like I said earlier, we have a wonderful community that has supported us a great deal, but we also recognize that that trust has got to be earned and we're going to continue to work to do that. Well, thank you so much for your time this morning. We appreciate your perspective. Thank you for having me.